जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहार Namaste, Saraswati Deve, Gauravani, Pacharini, Nirvase, Sasunyavari, Pashyat, Yade, Satarine, Panchakalpa, Tarubhisya, Kripa, Sindhu, Vevacha, Dita, Nam, Pavane, Vyo, Vaishnavi, Vyo, Namaho, Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu, Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadar, Har, Siva, Siddhi, Gaur, Bhakta, Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. 
Hare Krishna. So, I was asked to, I was requested to speak on one of the demons that Lord Krishna killed. It's one of the first demons, it's called Sakatasura. He's also known as the cart demon. So in the wake of uh, Janmashtami coming up, so the idea was to kind of focus a little bit more on Krishna's pastimes. And each of these particular demons that Krishna killed represents a certain anartha or unwanted quality that one may have. So these demons that are being killed are actually symbolic of the, the, the different bad qualities that the living entity carries and how to get rid of those bad qualities through the process of devotional service. Therefore, Krishna kills our bad qualities or removes our bad qualities by the process of bhakti. Now these pastimes are not, some people might think they're some stories or somebody's creation. They're actual factual historical events in the life of Krishna's appearance on the planet. For those who may have some doubts, the acharyas, the great souls, they establish that these pastimes of Krishna are factual historical events that took place beyond our purview from thousands and thousands of years ago when Krishna appeared on the planet 5,000 years ago. So uh, this particular demon was a demon in his last life. <laughs> And uh, he was the son of Hiranyaksha, one of the big powerful demons that was killed by um, Lord, uh, let's see, who killed Hiranyaksha? Varahadev, Varahadev, yeah. So he was doing some mischief in an area of one, uh, one uh, sadhu's ashram, Lomasa Muni, and he was breaking trees. Yeah, he did that. Don't break any trees, though, so please. You can break other things, but not trees. Okay. <laughs> please, no trees, please. <laughs> Where did you find him? <laughs> Came from another level of existence to this world. Hiring, obviously. It says the son liberates the father. Okay. <laughs> So our father thinks he's liberating the son, but it's not like that. <laughs> Factual, <laughs> scriptural, <laughs> scriptural evidence shows also. <laughs> so yeah, that's why you have a putra, putra pinda, but not pinda, putra. When you have a, a good son, then that son can carry the father even if the father doesn't make it. <laughs> hope you make it. <laughs> we hope everybody makes it. That's our that's our sincere prayer. Yeah, you got a lot of work to do. <laughs> okay, here comes Ma. The show's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he was breaking trees. He was a big, powerful demon. And so he was cursed to, because he had a big, powerful body, he was cursed that in his next life he would also have be a demon in Vrindavan, but he wouldn't have a physical body. <laughs> so this particular demon represents pride in one's family members and friends pride in one's body. If one has a very healthy, strong body, it's like some people like to, you know, go to Gold's Gym and work out, <laughs> get big muscles and try to show them off and show how people, how good body they have. But then a mosquito comes along and finishes them off. You know? <laughs> so much for that body. <laughs> So, 
Yeah, so these, yeah, thank you for laughing. <laughs> I can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> but anyway, the point is that, yeah, people get proud of so many things, proud of my, my body, my family members, proud of the country I was born in, proud of the intelligence that I may have. Pride comes in so many ways. But this particular pride was due to his body. He had a big, powerful body. And he was, you know, the son of a very powerful demon, Hiranyaksha, who had to be killed by the Supreme Lord personally. So he represents laziness, dullness, lethargy. Lethargy means miskins, another way of saying laziness. No enthusiasm for anything. And uh, so he took birth, or he reappeared, not birth, but he, took, he reappeared in Vrindavan. So Krishna was a really tiny baby. He was just less than one year old. And there was a ceremony in the village, and they had invited so many Brahmins, friends, family members to celebrate. It was Krishna's one-year-old one, one year old birthday. And Mother Yasoda was holding Krishna on her lap, and Krishna was getting sleepy. So Mother Yasoda thought, oh, I just should put Krishna down because I have so many things to do and he's sleeping anyway. So she took him and she put him underneath this cart. It was a huge cart and it had all kinds of utensils, pots and various cooking items and other things. And it was loaded down and she put him underneath the cart. Now she went on to with her business, greeting the guests. And Krishna's thinking, hmm, hmm, where did my mother go? <laughs> I'm hungry, and she is my food. <laughs> you know, that's what women do, right? When they have babies, they feed the kids. So you don't have to go to the store. <laughs> Get fresh milk right there. <laughs> it's really healthy, too. They say if you, if you bring your baby up on breast milk for the first six months, that child will be very strong throughout their whole life. Yeah, it's true. That's the best milk that's provided by God directly. <laughs> so yeah, he's asking, thinking, where's my mother? So he became very unhappy. So he decided to do something. <laughs> and so Krishna, then he kicked the cart. And and his soul, you know, he's got a little, he's just like one years old, little soft, tiny baby feet. He just touched the cart with his feet, and the whole cart came crashing down with all of its heavy weight. And it was, the, the axle broke, the wheel fell off, the cart smashed, and all the pots and pans and everything on the cart went different directions. And everybody was thinking, what happened? Of course, they were afraid for Krishna, but Krishna was unharmed. He kicked it in such a way that the cart went the other way. <laughs> now, a demon, that demon, Sakatashura, had taken, not birth, but he entered into the cart and became the cart. So Krishna also knew that that demon was there. So when he kicked the cart, the cart fell and the demon crashed down and died. So he, that was one of the first demons he ever killed. He was only one year. That's even before Putana. Mm -hmm. So uh, that demon, and this is the essence of our explanation, represents these bad qualities. So sometimes we find that devotees, they struggle in Krishna consciousness because of bad habits. We still have some bad habits, things that are there when we, before we became devotees that we still like to do, that are still, we're still over our attachments. We know it's wrong, but still, we can't get rid of it. Some bad habits, you know, they could be like, you know, got to go to the movies, <laughs> see what's playing on the movies, or, you know, uh, read some, you know, science fiction novels or something. <laughs> In other words, some things that we may, or maybe we, like to eat certain things that we shouldn't be eating. <laughs> and so these bad habits are there. But devotees should not be discouraged 
because these bad habits are simply due to our association with material energy and they can be destroyed by the power of Krishna consciousness. So these bad habits will block, and I use the word with emphasis, our progress in spiritual life. Just like when Prabhupada was, when he first began the movement, devotees in 26 Second Avenue in New York, you know, they were still had many bad habits. And when Prabhupada would give a class, after the class, they go out and smoke a cigarette. <laughs> and then they come back in. <laughs> and, you know, hear some more of Prabhupada or get some prasadam. The Prabhupada could notice that. And he said, oh, you may not give this up right away, but, you know, you should understand that this is a sm small little thing. And don't let it become between you and Krishna. Don't let it become between you and Krishna. So he encouraged the devotees to give up these habits that were actually contrary to our execution of bhakti, such as intoxication, which is one of them. So the devotees may also have a little, some struggle, or maybe we're just not so enthusiastic about Krishna consciousness. You know, we were like, yeah, I can't wait till Sunday. That's the best day of the week. I can get a good feast on that day. I don't have to cook. <laughs> so we come to the temple once a week, and the rest of the week we do something else. <laughs> so that's, and that's the spiritual laziness that comes by way of associating with the material energy or associating with people who are all also like that. So that's another thing, having bad association. Not bad association, but association that is not favorable to our spiritual life. Like old friends, just like you join the Hare Krishna movement and you know you have some friends and then you try to bring them in and they say, ah, I want to go to mountains, man. The mountains are better. <laughs> or let me ride my bicycle, you know. <laughs> So they don't want to do what you want to do. And now your life is changing, you're attracted to Krishna, and you're trying to bring your friends in. But you still they're still your friends, so every once in a while you see them and they say, hey, come on, let's go to a party. Yeah, I got some good grass, you know. <laughs> you know, it's cheap, but it's good, you know. It's called Radha Red, you know. <laughs> not, not Radha Red, but... <laughs> Anyway, they, they, they try to get you to sit down and, you know, take a few tokes and <laughs> tokes, smokes, jokes, you know. <laughs> and you think, well, you know, these are my friends, so I, you know, so it won't hurt if I do it once in a while. <laughs> and then after a while, you feel bad about it because you know it's not good for your Krishna consciousness and you think, yeah. So the whole thing is not so much about the things you're doing, it's about your friends. So they still want you to be their friend, but you're trying to bring them into Krishna, but they're not interesting, but they still like you and you're still hanging out with some of the same friends. Sounds familiar? <laughs> so, and then, you know, you think, well, you know, uh, yeah, I can't bring them in, but still I don't want to give them up. They're nice guys or nice girls. <laughs> so. So, we, you know, we get stuck like that. But if you pray to Krishna, and this is very important, and increase the quality of your bhakti, and this is where we have to get over this laziness, because bhakti works in such a way as the more you're in it, the better you get. And the less you're in it, you can't really taste that happiness. Bhakti requires attention. It requires time. It requires effort. And it requires some determination when we face these obstacles in our life. If we stay in it, then it gets better and better and better. And we see, just like, you know, I joined back in the 1970s. 1972, when I first coming to the Krishna consciousness, and that was, that was already seven years after Prabhupada had started the movement. So many people who were coming at that time, they would come. And I saw it many times, they would come to the temple, associate with devotees, and then uh, do some service, get inspired. Then all of a sudden they'd be gone. Where'd they go? And 
Then after about a week or two weeks, maybe even longer, they come back and they're burnt out. <laughs> they tried material life again and it didn't work. So they came back and they tried again. And then they just, they would try again and get really enthusiastic. And then after some time, they're gone. What happened? They're gone again. And then a couple months later or sometime later, they'd be back again. So they kept trying, but at the same time, they couldn't get rid of these old habits. So habits like second nature, those habits that we have that are really not favorable to our spiritual life, they're, they're like part of our consciousness. They're, they come to the surface sometimes, or sometimes they even remain on the surface, and they can pull us away from Krishna. So he, this is the demon Sakadasura, and Krishna, as he killed that demon so easily, he can help remove our, our those anarthas, those bad habits that we have. Like one time, I couldn't stop eating potato chips, Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> so every lunch I had to have a bag of potato chips. Without potato chips, there was no lunch. <laughs> So I knew it wasn't good, but I liked them. <laughs> so I became a potato chip addict. <laughs> so I thought, hmm, uh, yeah. yeah. You know, it's potatoes. So, you know, the International Society for Cooking and Distributing Potatoes. That's one of our second names for our movement. <laughs> you can count, potatoes will be on every feast. <laughs> In the Kadasi, there is potato pakora, mashed potatoes, potato sabji, potato everything, even potato drink. You know. <laughs> so I thought, I'm not so bad, you know, at least I'm. <laughs> but still, it wasn't so good, so I decided, you know, I have to give up these potatoes, <laughs> potato chips. So it was not easy. So I figure you got to get addicted to something else better than that potatoes in that way. The potatoes will go away and I'll have a new addiction. So then I got addicted to raisins. Okay. <laughs> so, so, that, so I thought, all right, well, it's a little better, tastes better actually. <laughs> and they're real more healthier. <laughs> but then that was the problem too. <laughs> too many raisins. <laughs> I was raised in hell. <laughs> so what can you do? So you get attached to these things, but then you have to pray to Krishna and somehow or other realize that they're not right and, and increase your bhakti. Because it's not easy to get rid of these habits. They're, so, they're like second nature. But if you don't get discouraged and don't give, 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 give in to these things that are secondary but not necessary, then in due course of time, by the power of your association with devotees and the chanting of the Hare Krishna movement, you develop, you develop higher taste. And that's what we're looking for. The higher taste will push away the lower taste. Otherwise, the lower taste seems to be the taste that it is what we want. But it's the higher taste. So if you stick in Krishna consciousness, don't give up become determined to overcome whatever is blocking because everyone has some block in Krishna consciousness. There's something that is causing us not to make progress. Something. Maybe it's or maybe you are we're critical of other devotees. Maybe that's one of the problems. Or we just uh, you know, I only do like to do the service that I want to do. Even if I'm asked, I won't do whatever they ask me unless I like it. So we have so many blocks in our Krishna consciousness. Or, you know, I like to eat prasadam, and then on Sunday I, I make up for the rest of the week. <laughs> and I eat so much I can't move. And then Monday is like, oh, hell. <laughs> but I, then I forget about it on Tuesday, and I can't wait to Sunday again. <laughs> It, what today? What's today anyway? Today's Sunday. Okay, yeah. <laughs> just checking. 
So yeah, we get we get uh, you know absorbed or we get attached to a certain an artha, a certain thing that is not favorable to our spiritual life. But one should not be discouraged. But one has to fight. It's a fight. And because these things, some of them go really, really deep. And I've seen devotees who have given up the fight and gone away and then somehow or other allowed that anartha, that unwanted desire or that attachment to pull them away from Krishna. So the whole process of Krishna consciousness is to gradually remove these attachments. And that's done by the power of our chanting and by the association of Vaishnavas especially. This is where we get our strength, association and not only associating with Vaishnavas but serving Vaishnavas. If we serve Vaishnavas, we get special mercy from Krishna because Vaishnavas are very dear to Krishna and by serving the devotees we actually get the special mercy of Krishna. And that gives us the strength to overcome the things that are blocking our spiritual progress. And one of the things that this demon represents is laziness. So spiritual life, you can't be lazy <laughs> because maya is always there. As soon as you're lazy, you're captured by maya immediately. And laziness is such a bad quality that someone asked Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, is laziness a demoniac quality? Prabhupada said, no, it's lower. <laughs> it's lower. That means in a material world, nobody likes a lazy person, <laughs> even in the material world. Because, you know, you can't do it, you know, you're just useless. So, laziness start is a feature of lack of enthusiasm for what is important, what is necessary. So when we understand deeper how important it is to develop our Krishna consciousness as this foundation for the fulfillment of all our desires, when you're Krishna conscious, you're happy. When you're Krishna conscious, there's no problems. And even if you face a problem, it's easy to overcome by the power of your Krishna consciousness. So that's the, that's the solution. And Krishna is there to help. As Krishna killed this demon, Sakadashura, who represents laziness, dullness, lethargy, pride in one's body, all of these are the quality, characteristics of this demon, then that can all only be destroyed by Krishna. So if we stay fixed in our devotional service and never get discouraged, even if we fall, they say if you fall down, just like someone said to Prabhupada, well, what happens to you when you fall down? Prabhupada said, you get up. But then the same question came, well, what happens if you fall down again? Prabhupada said, you get up again. What happens if you fall again? Get up. <laughs> Don't be discouraged. Of course, learn what causes you to fall down and try to avoid it. But never be discouraged by apparent failures in spiritual life because we can learn lessons from these things. It can help us grow, help us understand deeper where our strengths are and where our weaknesses are. And when you understand your weaknesses, you guard against that. And when you understand where your strength, you emphasize that and you accelerate in that area. And then that, then that brings Krishna's mercy more and more. So never become discouraged by becoming somewhat, apparently, we're, devotee is never defeated. The only way you can be defeated is you give up. If you don't give up, you can, you'll eventually come to the platform of, uh, you know, of self-realization. In other words, you'll become, well, we said, prasannatma. Prasanna mean, means, means joyful. It's a joyful process. <laughs> And that joyfulness is not something that is intermittent, intermediate or intermittent, intermittent. It doesn't come and go. When you reach that level of practice, it stays. You're happy all the time, constantly. It's a feature of advancement in Krishna consciousness. And that's just a preliminary stage of love of God. It's not even on the highest platform. So 
Always stay fixed in your Krishna consciousness and uh, learn from your mistakes. See what is um, your problems. If you can't see your own anarthas or your own bad habits or your own things that are blocking, ask somebody. We did that exercise once in Chicago. Bhakti Tirta Swami was giving the lecture. And he said, all right, we're going to do a little, uh, you know, workshop here. Pair off into twos. So we paired off into twos. And then he said, now you have to ask the other person, what's wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> and that person is supposed to tell you. <laughs> In other words, what can you see in me that, I, that needs improvement? Or what are some of my problems? That's why you get married, right? Because you, know, <laughs> you don't have to ask for it. You get it anyway. <laughs> it happens automatically. <laughs> and that, it's, you know, it's provided special. <laughs> but that's, that's when you, but you should... Because there was one person who says, when people, I like people around me who criticize me, that way I can understand what is wrong with me and then I can overcome these things and improve like that. So don't be afraid of getting feedback that is negative because it can help you if you take it seriously and see how to, how to, uh, what causes you to have that quality or characteristic and how to overcome it. Just like it, it says that, what were some of the, the things? That, it says, if you want to be happy, don't make plans. That's in the Bhagavatam. If you want to be happy, don't make plans. <laughs> if you want to get over, uh, you want to get over anger, Practice forgiveness. If you want to get over lusty desires, then uh, engage more and more in Krishna consciousness. That helps you to overcome these lusty desires because you're focusing on the spiritual energy then. If you want to get over envy, if, you have, if you're envious towards a certain person, serve that person. <laughs> Do some service, make that person happy, and that will also make you happy, and you'll forget what is the cause of that envy. And if you really want to get rid of all your desire, all bad habits, just stay in kirtan. <laughs> yeah, if you stay in kirtan all the time, everything works nicely. There's one story where two devotees, they were both temple presidents, and they had problems with each other. And they wouldn't speak to each other. They were, they both had their temples. So there was this kirtan, and they were both invited. So they came, and the kirtan was going on. And the devotees were dancing, and it was a circle. And the devotees were dancing in the middle of the circle. And one TP was on one side of the circle, and the other one was on the other side. They made sure they were a distance apart. <laughs> but one devotee who was very, he understood the situation. He, he thought, I'm going to help these devotees. <laughs> so he grabbed one of them and pulled him into the canton and started dancing with him. And he was dancing with one of them. And then he very strategically danced towards the other one. <laughs> and then when he got to the other one, he grabbed him and pulled him in. And all of a sudden, the three of them are dancing <laughs> together. And then he slipped out, and the two of them were dancing together, and they forgot all about their problems. So, so that's what kirtan can do. Kirtan, will, kirtan is so effective in removing all everything. So if you stay in kirtan, then kirtan will lift you up to, you know, to pure Krishna consciousness. If you stay in the kirtan and get absorbed in the kirtan. Not like we're in the kirtan and we're thinking, hmm, yeah, mm hmm. Let's see, when is that prashadam coming? <laughs> yeah, Gormitra cooked today, I know it's going to be good. <laughs> so, you know, that's not in the kirtan, it's in the prashadam. <laughs> so, keep your consciousness where you are, that's the important thing. 
If you're here, be here. If you're somewhere else, be wherever you are. But if you stay in the place you are and keep your consciousness, that's how you become Krishna conscious. Always stay, try to stay focused where you are. And the mind will wander. Chanchala himana krishna pramati balabhadra. The mind wanders. Just bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. Every time you bring it back, it becomes um, harder for the mind to go. You keep practicing, bring it back. If you don't bring it back, then it becomes harder and harder each time you try bringing it back. So don't let that mind take you somewhere else, because the mind will do that. It's the nature of the mind. It's always moving like that. So if we stay connected in the activities that we're involved with, particular kirtan or lecture or even doing our service, and then we're in the spiritual energy. And we're getting purified automatically. And then we don't remember, we don't even remember some of our things that are bothering us or problems we had. We forget about them. And they also become less through the power of bhakti. Because bhakti destroys, automatically destroys these, quali these bad qualities. But it takes time, depending on how enthusiastic you are and how determined you are. That's why Rupa Goswami makes these, connects these two things together. He doesn't make a separation. Enthusiasm and determination go together. Because if you're enthusiastic, then when you're faced with uh, obstacles, then determination will be easy to, to bring about so you can overcome these obstacles. And the world is full of obstacles. And of course, we also have our internal obstacles that come to our consciousness. Those are stronger because we can't see those. That's why good association helps you to overcome these internal obstacles because by, by the association of devotees, you actually can start to recognize whatever problems you have and that, that association can help you overcome the problems. So... This, uh, this demon, um, Krishna killed simply by touching his foot to the cart. So easy. Krishna made it so easy. It was just like, there was not even an effort. He didn't even kick the cart. He just touched his little tiny pink foot. No, All these things kept crashing down. And everybody, wow, and Krishna's there. Mm, where's my mother? <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> you know, for Krishna, it's easy. So for Krishna to get rid of our bad habits, for him, it's easy. But we have to make an effort. He won't do it unless you try. He'll help you. He'll do it, actually. He'll do it for you. But he has to see that you really want it. So the effort you make brings the mercy you need. That's Krishna consciousness. Okay, so this particular demon is um, easily removed, and he represents laziness, false pride, pride in a nice body, pride in nice having big, big and important family, and stupidness. <laughs> okay. Any questions? <laughs> Don't everybody raise their hand at once. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. I forgot your name. We're over here. Okay. Mar Marcel? Hey, I got it. How about that? See, I just tried and I got it. I didn't remember it. Krishna told me your name's Marcel. Uh, th thank you for inspiring lecture. Um, I would just like to, I would just like to ask about uh, laziness. So, how can, like, when when we are lazy? So, what uh, what is like some things that can really help us to overcome that laziness? Well, that's, that's recommended that you associate with people who are really enthusiastic. 
Because when you associate that, that enthusiastic attitude will rub off on you. If you associate with lazy people, you'll stay lazy. <laughs> Or people who are not even a little bit, even a little better. You want to get in the association of people who are really, really enthusiastic. That don't want to waste time, that really enjoy Krishna consciousness, that are always making plans how to serve nicely. These are the devotees you want to associate with. Yeah. Okay. That's one of the way. And then you have to realize that laziness is not going to help you. Prabhupada tells the story of laziness, where there was one kingdom, the king, and there was a minister. And people were going to the minister saying, you know, I don't want to work, just give me some free food and a place to stay. So the minister was getting overwhelmed, so he came to the king and he said, this is the problem, nobody wants to do anything, but they want food and they want some place to live. So the, the king said, all right, build a big house and, and invite anyone who is actually lazy. If you're actually lazy, you can come here, and we'll feed you, and you can live here. So they built this big house and it filled up fast. <laughs> and then when it was full, the minister said to the king, it's full. The king said, all right, now set it on fire. <laughs> So they set it on fire and everybody was running out except two guys. One guy says, hey, it's a little hot in here, you know. The other guy said, ah, don't worry, just turn over on the other side, you know. <laughs> and then that was a report and the king said, he, they're actually lazy, you can feed them. <laughs> so we're lazy for certain things, but not for everything. <laughs> So, but we shouldn't be lazy for Krishna Consciousness because Krishna Consciousness is what we're really looking for in life because that will fulfill all our desires perfectly. So, yeah. Yes, Machi Prabhu. Hare Krishna. I just thought of um, one example from the past. So I thought to ask you, what happens with determination when enthusiasm is being faked? <clears throat> What happens when and then, if it's faked enthusiasm, then determination will also not be there. Because determination is something that keeps you moving in Krishna consciousness. Enthusiasm is what inspires you to work in Krishna consciousness. Determination keeps you going in Krishna consciousness. And so they work together. So if enthusiasm is just some show, or some external thing that people are doing, then uh, they'll lose that when they run into certain obstacles automatically. And then they won't be enthusiastic to continue because it's artificial. If it's real, enthusiasm, as described by Rupa Goswami, means to use your intelligence how to serve best. That's enthusiasm. I have this service to do, how can I do it in the best possible way? That's enthusiasm. So if you're always in that mood, then you're gonna, you're, when you reach obstacles, you'll say, oh, I have this service, it's a difficult one. Or um, I have the situation is difficult, then I just have to apply my intelligence and understand how to overcome it. And pray to Krishna at the same time. So, if it's fake enthusiasm, determination is not going to be there. There must be something I misunderstood. Um, I'm thinking about, would you mind if I tell a little story uh, yeah. from the ISKCON past? Once I've heard so that um, devotees told Vishnu John Maharaj that he's so enthusiastic in Kirtan. And he said, no, I'm not. I'm faking. And then when I see others becoming enthusiastic, then I also become enthusiastic. So I'm trying to relate to that, what you have said. I have no doubts about what you have said, but just trying to understand better. Well, how much is he actually saying that as a reality or just a statement of humility? <laughs> 
So I, I knew Vishnu Jan Maharaj, and his mood was enthusiasm about everything. He was always enthusiastic, no matter what he was doing. So when he was counseling devotees, when he was doing kirtan, when he was taking prashadam, he would always say after he finished prashadam, this is the best prashadam I ever had. And then he would eat the next meal and he would say, this is the best. And he would always say, yeah. So he was always glorifying the activities of devotional service, either verbally or by his enthusiasm. But sometimes you don't feel enthusiastic, but then that shouldn't be a reason for not acting enthusiastic. Because we know that is the quality of the soul. The soul has natural good qualities. So if you're not in that mood, that means you're acting on the material level or on some shadow. Therefore, if you want to overcome that, then you have to understand to be enthusiastic is natural. <laughs> to be determined is natural. These are the qualities of the soul, not the qualities of the mind. The mind will jump here and there. So we use our intelligence to engage the mind in the right way, that's all. If the intelligence is weak, or it's just like the weak mind, then you will, you'll find yourself giving up, or going away, or doing something else. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Mataji, Hare Krishna. We, we have a microphone. Where's our microphone runner here? We have to get a, an elected runner. Okay, there he is. Hare Krishna. Thank you for um, inspiring lecture. <laughs> what about anger? Uh, if you are leader, danger, uh, ang anger. anger. Uh, if you are parents or teacher or leader, uh, well, we that anger is, is is meant to be beneficial for the persons you're leading. So, if you're in a position to guide other people, just like Prabhupada would get angry sometimes, and sometimes his anger was like so strong it shaked the room, but he did it as a service to the devotees. So a parent, a parent who's acting properly will also have to get angry at the children in order for the children to understand. So that may be necessary. That may be necessary. So that's not a bad quality. That's part of the, the duty that you have in leading others. But if you get overwhelmed by the anger and you can't control it, then that's, that's a problem. You have to be able to use anger and not be used by anger. And Prabhupada could do that. He would get so angry, and the next minute it's like nothing happened. He would be smiling. It didn't even happen. So these qualities can be used in Krishna's service, but you should not be encapsulated by or controlled by these qualities. A teacher might have to get angry, to make a point to a student. A uh, parent might have to get angry because the student and the, the, parent, the child is, is hurting themselves by doing the wrong thing. So the, child, the parent's anger is actually compassion towards the child. And the same with guru, disciple. Thank you. Yeah, but don't let anger Overwhelm because if you can't control it, then don't use it. <laughs> it has to be controlled. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Good question. Yes, Prabhu, another question on the other side here. Let's see, where's our microphone runner? Okay, there he is. He's, he's getting, getting a little faster. That's good. <laughs> Thank you very much, Maharaj. For you have to put on your running shoes. <laughs> uh, as Your Holiness said that uh, we need a feedback to 
develop because we may not see our uh, anarthas or the faults. Most of the times we can't see them, yeah. but other people can see them. Uh, in the meantime, I have noticed that most of times devotees are not keen on giving a feedback, thinking that they may Offended. fall into the aparata, yeah. Vaishnava aparata. So, who should give a feedback and how he should give a feedback in which That's circumstance? That's a good question, yeah. Well, it should be done in such a way as that, that, the, that you're doing it out of concern for the person. And that means with the, the statement is satyam priyam satyam bruyam. Speak the truth in a very sweet way. But don't minimize the truth. But speak it in a sweet way. <laughs> there are devotees who know how to do that. They speak the truth, but it's done very sweetly. But when you listen to it, it's like an arrow sh hitting you <laughs> because it's, it's really uh, attacking your false ego. <laughs> so yeah, it should be done in a night. And then if you want to you know, get a feedback, you should ask people who are close to you like that. Because, you know, because they know you and they have some regard for you, they'll, uh, they'll do it in the best way. If you ask someone who's not so close for you, they may not, because they don't understand you so much, they may say it in the wrong way. Or not say it at all. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you very much. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jaya Gaur Pimanande Hari 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 Mo Hari Krishna. Mm -hmm.